Tonight, I thought it would be fun to kind of show how the CSTAR app works and the imaging works. I, I know a lot of people that are on the channel have CSTARs, but I also know that there's a lot of people that are just doing research into getting a CSTAR and they are curious about how it works and what they're going to see and is it worth it, that sort of thing. So I thought maybe tonight what I would do is I would uh, set up the C-Star. I'm not going to do anything fancy like EQ mode or do a plan or anything like that. I thought maybe what I would do is just do a recording of from start to finish what it looks like to image an object. So I thought what I would do is, this is the main screen of the C-Star app. I'm already connected to my C-Star. It's on just the regular mode, not EQ mode. It's on 10 second exposures, like is pretty standard for regular mode, which is azimuth mode. Um, so I'm gonna go here and click Stargazing. And then I think maybe we will do Let's do a galaxy and let's find one that's visible now. Let's do this pinwheel galaxy. <coughs> Excuse me, it's about 59 degrees in the sky, so it's pretty high. So we should be able to image that for a little bit. Now I'm just going to click go to. And then the sea star is swiveling around and locating the target. Now this distance to target, it's pretty close. So it was already pointed in the general direction. It has now found that Pinwheel Galaxy M101. You can see that in the top middle of the screen. And now it started to image it. Up there in the top right hand corner, you can see the little red dot with the timer. That tells you how many exposures have been saved and it just saved its first one and it populated that picture right there. So that's where those stars appeared and um, it will just get better and better. So as we watch this one, um, it's going to just get darker and darker. If I click on this little button on the right hand side with the little star in the circle uh, right there, you can identify the object so that you know where you're looking. Because early on, um, on this object at least, it's not very visible, but as you see, it's clicking off. It's now saved 30 seconds of exposure, so three of those 10 second exposures. And now you can start to see some things appearing in that middle. Um, one of the reasons I chose this one is because if I click that circle again, you see it's pretty good size. If I had picked that NGC 5477 just above it to the right, that's a very, very tiny object. We probably wouldn't see anything but a little white dot, maybe even a fuzzy dot. But you see that this M101 is almost fills the screen, you know, right there in the center. I'm going to turn that off so we can watch it appear. Um, if I want to turn off these icons that are on the right hand side, I click these three dots right above the green battery icon. And then I can click on that full screen mode and that will turn off all of those icons so that all I see appearing is the object that we're looking at. It still does keep the timer on there. Uh, you can see the timer is clicking off. It's now saved one minute and 30 seconds. And it just is getting gradually brighter and brighter as the time goes on. I'm going to go ahead and click those icons back on so that we can do some looking around. Uh, we can navigate in and out of this screen if we want. The icons on the right hand side, this one up at the top with the three lines, squiggly lines, that allows us to adjust what we're seeing. It's not adjusting what is saving, it is just adjusting what we see on our screen. Um, if I want to return that back to the default so that it doesn't have any editing on it, all I have to do is find the one that is not on the right. Um, the red 
dot here in the bottom and then hit that reset button and that will restore it back to the default. Uh, the button right below it is for focusing. In order to um, focus the object, I would need to stop the imaging. And then if I click on that focus thing, I can do an auto focus or I can manually focus. If I want to move the screen around a little, say there's something to the left of this object and I want to navigate the screen a little to the left or something, I would click this button right here. It, it's in the middle of um, imaging, so it doesn't let me do that while it's imaging because it's um, trying to maintain that object in the center. So it is doing an automatic tracking as part of the system. So it's keeping that M101 right there in the center. So it's not going to allow us to move that while we're imaging. This little button that looks like a wizard wand, it kind of looks like a pencil with an eraser on the top with little dots coming out the top. If you click that, it will do a denoising of the video of the image that is on the screen. It's not going to save it unless you tell it to, but you can do this denoising to see what it looks like denoised or the app will take out some of the the noise that is in there. See, if I zoom in, you can see that object a little bit in there. This is still fairly early on. We have only saved two minutes of exposure time. Um, we can navigate out of this screen from here and just leave it continuing to image. If I click that little arrow button down at the tops, let me go back in there and show you again. It's on the top left, right above the red word that says enhancing. It's that little arrow down. If I click that, it takes me back to the main screen. You can see that the stargazing box is orange. And in the top right hand corner of that box, there's a little icon of the sea star that's telling me it is currently imaging. But I could go in here and uh, look for other objects while it's doing its thing. Um, down along the bottom is the sky atlas. If I click on that, it lets me find things. It's, it's showing me right now. I am looking at M101, but I can move it around and try and find other objects. If I am getting tired of imaging that one, I could go in, in here and find other objects. Uh, to get back to the main page, I'll again click that little arrow down right below the red um, 1008 at the top left. And that takes me back to that home screen. And then I, I want to see, well, what's, what's going on with my imaging? So I just click on that stargazing box, the one with the orange circle or, or outlining around it. Click on that. It takes a minute to load the picture and there it loads. If you're away from this page for very long, um, it will come back with the image that was on there before you left the page. And then it will, the next time it updates, it will add the updated images. And so it can, you can see significant changes if you navigate it away from this page for a long period of time. I think what I'll do at this point is just leave it running so you can see how it works. And um, if you want to fast forward or speed it up a little, you can do that. And then it will show you um, the final image. But if you want to see how it works exposure by exposure, just leave it here and let it run. And we'll see how it ends up at the end. I think I will speed up the video playing a little bit just because it could get pretty tedious and it may still even with just watching it. But this is how it works on the device that you're using to operate the C-Star. And this is what you can expect. Um, of course, all of the different objects appear at different times. If you image an object that is more visible, um, right off the bat it's gonna show up a lot faster but on um, this one if, if you 
continue watching it, you'll see the spiral arms start to appear. And, you know, even after just a pretty short time, we can still get a pretty nice image on the sea star. So here we are, we've recorded and saved about 20 minutes of exposure. 
Um, you do see that there's occasionally a message that comes across the top that says stacking failed. Uh, well, when, when the sea star is taking that exposure, what it's doing is matching it up to the main picture. And if there's a flaw in that image for some reason, whether it it's tracking is off and so it's uh, made a little bit of a, a skew or elongated stars or something, it will delete those exposures and not include them so that it doesn't um, pollute the image. And so you'll see that across the top occasionally. But this is about 20 minutes in uh, with no enhancing, with a little bit of enhancing, darkening the background, brightening the white part of this galaxy. It would be um, even better than it is now. But this is the raw image that is saving on the sea star. So I hope you've enjoyed this little journey as we show you how the sea star works and what you can expect. Um, the expectations are different depending on the object. This one is a, a little bit of a faint one, but not faint. So it's obviously appearing with some post-processing and adjusting, we would be able to make this object even more beautiful. But this is how the sea star works. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, learned a few things. Uh, we are always wishing clear skies to everybody. Thanks for watching.